Hello everyone, Mrs. West here with this week's project. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday and that you're ready to get back to making some art. This week, I'm going to introduce you to a famous American artist. Her name is Georgia O'Keeffe. I don't know if you've ever seen any of her work, but I'll show you a few of them. This is a picture of Georgia O'Keeffe. She lived for many years in New Mexico, which is an, a United States state, a state in the United States, in the southwestern part of the country. She lived in an area that was pretty much a desert, and the houses, she's standing behind, she's standing with her house behind her, is made out of a kind of mud, clay, and wood. And she would find these skulls, this is a skull of an oxen or a cow, um, in the desert. And she would take them home and sometimes paint them. Now, uh, Georgia knew that she wanted to be an artist when she was very young. She spent as much time as possible outside and with nature. Some of her most famous paintings are of very large flowers, which I'll show you in a moment. Georgia was very a very independent person, and she enjoyed spending time on her own. own. She wasn't terribly concerned about what people thought of her. Okay, so let me show you some pictures. This is one of her most famous paintings. It's called, oddly enough, Red Poppies. And it's a picture of a flower. This flower is only about this big. But when George O'Keefe would make her paintings, they were very, very large, much larger than this piece of paper. She liked to look at things very, very closely and get all the details. She also liked to do landscape painting, that is, pictures of the land around her. This was a famous mountain in New Mexico, and she painted it many, many times. You can see the desert area here, and then it goes up to the mountain. She was also very well known for painting skulls. And here's a skull. I don't know what animal this is, some type of elk. Um, but it's got an awful lot of horns on it. And it almost looks like it's floating in the air. Because here again is the desert. And there's the big sky. Now, today we're going to practice drawing some flowers. But first, I would like you to watch a read aloud video to learn more about this artist. So I would like you to stop this video now and watch the read aloud and then come back. After you watch that, please watch my instructional video to practice drawing some of these flowers. Okay, now for this lesson, you are only going to need two things. Well, three, I guess. Paper, pencil, and an eraser if you need it. I am going to draw with a marker because it's a lot easier for you to see. So you will be working with a pencil and I will be working with a marker. You can't erase marker. Okay, so I'm going to start with this flower and then I'm gonna work my way down to this flower. So let's get started. Now, this flower is going to start with rather a small circle. I have cut up some papers um, so that I do each flower on a different paper. It might be easier for you to see that way. Okay, and I have actually already drawn a little circle in pencil so that I have a good guide. Okay, circles can be hard to draw sometimes. Here we go. <clears throat> okay, now to help me, I'm going to put on five 
little lines, one at the top, two, one, two here, almost like arms, and one, two here, almost like legs. I know that I want to make one, two, three, four, five petals. So if I have five lines, that's going to help guide me to make five petals. So here I go, I'm gonna make loopy petals. Not too big. Now when I draw petals on a flower, I will often turn my paper. You don't have to, but that's the way I work. Okay, there's my petal with five. There's my flower with five petals. I'm going to put some of these little marks in there because petals sometimes have these little, they're not lines exactly, they're like indents in the flower, but they can look like lines. And then I'm gonna put a little squiggly stuff in the middle and some seeds because flowers have seeds and the birds eat those seeds a lot of times and of course the bees pollinate them so there is our first flower now we're going to move on to this one which looks like a sunflower now it can be hard to draw a good circle and sometimes i use tools to help me like a glass that can help me. So again, I drew a circle beforehand in pencil and now I'm gonna go around it in marker. Again, I'm turning my paper because that's how I draw circles. Okay, now on this flower, you notice has a, seems to have a lot of petals but I'm just going to draw eight lines on this, eight little lines. One on the top, one on the bottom, one on the side, one on the other side. And now I'm gonna go in between one, two, three, four. Those are my guidelines for the petals, okay? Now I'm going to go kind of like a zigzag, but it's got a little bit of a curve to it. And I'm going to go around. Whoops, I'm losing track of my guides. That's okay, they're just guides. Okay, last one. Now, I'm going to put petals in between the petals. Okay, and those are just almost like little zigzags. Again, turning my page, because that's how I work. You do not have to turn your page if you do not want to. Okay, and I'm going to give these petals a little bit, a little line there, which is an indent in the petal. Remember when we did the cat whiskers and we just kind of went pew? That's what I'm doing with these, pew. Okay, getting to the end there. Great, now. As we all know, sunflowers have a lot of seeds. And if you want to put them in as dots or little circles, you can. Or else you can do what is here called cross hatching, which is straight lines going one way. And they don't have to be perfectly straight. They don't even have to go perfectly to the other side. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to do some this way. because the seeds in a sunflower are kind of like a grid, but they usually have more of a circle in the middle. So maybe I'll put a little circle in here. Okay, there we go. That was flower number two. 
Let's move on to this flower. That looks like a daisy. Okay, small circle. Some spots in there. And I'm going to do my eight little marks again. Top, bottom, side, side, in between, in between, in between, and in between. I end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm going to make these longer petals that come to a point. So I'm going to use curved lines. And it can be a little hard to get them to be all the same length, but we try. Nature isn't always perfect either. Neither are we. And I'm turning my paper. Some people like to do this with the paper right side up, not turning it like me. That's up to you. Okay, there we go. I don't know, it could go either way. Now I'm going to do these little indent lines inside, like the whiskers on a cat. Okay, that's flower number three. Let's go to flower number four. Okay, circle. And maybe I'll put a little zigzaggy thing inside this one and some dots. Flowers can hold all different kinds of parts. Again, we're going to do the eight lines, starting top, bottom, side, side, and four in-betweens. Okay. These are going to be loopy petals, so I'm going to come up and make a loop, and then I'm going to go and make another loop, kind of like bunny ears. Loop, 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 round in a circle. Some might be longer than others, that's okay. I'm doing this freehand, which means that I'm not using the help of any other tools. And freehand is not perfection, and that is okay. Now, on this one, I made double petals, and I'm going to show you how to do that on this one. So that looks like it's a, a flower that's hmm, thicker, I guess you could say, because it's got more petals. Okay, now this could be, I don't know, this could be a type of chrysanthemum or something called a cone flower. Oops, I missed one. Okay, there we go. That was uh, flower number four. Now we're going to finish up with a simple tulip. Okay, and to make a tulip, I would like you to start with a letter U. Okay, that looks like a big capital U. Now, I'm going to make one sweeping line curve that goes this way. I'm going to make a small sweeping line that goes this way. And I'm going to make a little zigzag up top. I'm going to put a stem on this one because it looks kind of it, like it needs it. Okay, there we go. Those are our five flowers. I would like you to make each of these. If there are other flowers that you truly, truly love to make, I would love to see them. Okay, but please do the practice flowers first because next week we're going to do our final project. I don't want you to do a final flower this week. Okay, so get busy and make sure you watch that video, the read aloud about Georgia O'Keeffe. And as always, I can't wait to see what you come up with.
So, ta-ta for now.